If you're anything like me and you like reminiscing about old graphics cards, you'll quickly realise something. Nvidia naming schemes have been a mess. So let's try and recap exactly what Nvidia's naming schemes for GeForce graphics cards were in the past, but also currently are in the present. So whether or not you're looking into getting into some old retro cards yourself, or if you just want a quick history lesson, then I guess, I don't know. Keep on watching. Obviously, we've got to start with the original GeForce, the GeForce 256, released in 1999. Named after the 256 bit pipeline within the GPU itself, or more technically, a quad 64 bit one. So, no, this wasn't the 256 graphics card, neither is the next one called the 257. Instead, the next generation was the GeForce 2. And while there's pretty much only one GeForce 256, well, okay, technically two, here we got a lot more different SKUs, each one with a different suffix to let you know exactly what it's about, going from GTS to Pro to TI to Ultra. Add in a few more numbers here or there, and then the next big change came in with the GeForce 4 lineup. However, that meant you had the generation number of the particular SKU basically repeat, once just after GeForce, and then again as the first of those four digits. Some genius at Nvidia realized that, and got rid of it with the next generation, breaking us GeForce FX. The FX was a one-time thing, however it brought us the pretty standard Nvidia procedure for many years to come, with four digits, the first one representing the generation, and the rest representing the exact tier of graphics card we're dealing with here, and with a bunch of extra suffixes to make life even more annoying, ranging from VE to LE to ZT to even XD, funnily enough, which we more associate with AMD now. Fast forward to GeForce 6, and we get even more random suffixes to keep track of, with GS, GTO, Turbo Cash, just to name a few. That continued until the GeForce 9000 series released in 2008. Eight. And at that point, Team Green had a choice, either go for GeForce 10,000 next or come up with something a bit less confusing. And that is exactly how we got the scheme we are a lot more familiar with now, starting off the GeForce 100 and 200 series. And yes, there was actually a 100 series, just that was pretty boring. The major changes here include going down to just three digits, but also having the suffixes like GTX or GT come before the numbers. Or while the prefix was yet another way to represent a tier of card, going from GT to GTS to finally GTX on the high end. And that's how things pretty much continued until the Fermi based GeForce 500 cards released in 2010, which saw the reintroduction of an old friend, that being the TI suffix, or TI as Nvidia insists we call it, which was basically there to give room for even more tiers in a product stack and basically represented a slightly upgraded version of an existing graphics card. Then fast forward to the second generation Kepler cards with the 700 series where we saw GeForce Titan enter the scene. These were the best of the best. Besides that lasted like two generations before Titans dropped the GeForce moniker. And then we reach everyone's favorite Pascal cards aka GeForce 10 where is the naming scheme we pretty much all know and love. GT and GTX to represent lower tier and higher tier cards and then maybe a TI at the end if you're feeling fancy. But then things would get a major shakeup with the next generation, and no, it wasn't 1100, it was actually RTX 2000, which of course brought the major change of, you know, there being an R in the name. These cards released in 2018, yeah, RTX was released almost six years ago, if that doesn't make you feel old. And the R in RTX obviously stands for ray tracing, this being the first generation of Nvidia graphics cards with special ray tracing acceleration built in. And while GeForce 10 cards could technically ray trace, it's pretty much the same like saying that a car has a 0 to 100 speed of just yes. However, while we do have RTX cards, we don't have RT cards. We don't have those lower tiers, mostly because Nvidia doesn't make them anymore. I mean, making ray tracing capable graphics cards that are so weak just doesn't really make much sense. And let's not forget about the other big change with RTX 20 series, that being the addition of the super suffix as well, which is different from TI, I promise, and is essentially a way of representing mid-generation refreshes as some of the more popular SKUs that could be made a bit more appealing to the customer. Finally, we reach the present day, and that's pretty much the naming scheme we have going on right now with the RTX 40 series graphics cards. And yes, I know I haven't mentioned the GTX 16 series, which released after RTX 2000, but I know I'll already get a headache trying to explain that to you, so 
What do you think was NVIDIA's best naming scheme? Let me know down in the comments below. And hey, maybe so check out our Patreon, because it costs just a fraction of what a modern Team Green GPU costs. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Elevroniak, Dev Panda, Noskov of Kane, Barlish Velka, not a pseudonym, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Level Up. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.